Welcome to uh, ND Admissions Live, our global family. This evening, we're so delighted to have all of our newly admitted students joining us tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to answering so many of your questions and um, ensuring that you're walking away feeling informed and, and ready to make that big step to Notre Dame this fall. Uh, we'll do introductions first. My name is Leah Zimmer. I'm the Director of International Student and Scholar Affairs. Uh, my office serves about 1,500 international students on campus, including about 500 to 600 undergraduate students who you'll be joining this fall. And uh, we're just delighted uh, to be thinking about uh, how to make your time at Notre Dame really powerful um, and help you move on to your, your next big thing. So, Michael. Welcome, everyone, and congratulations on your admissions to Notre Dame. Welcome. Um, I, my name is Michael Remke, and again, I serve as the Senior um, Associate Director in the Office of Financial Aid here at Notre Dame. One of my prim one of primary responsibilities is to help the students, uh, the international students who are on need-based financial aid. So if you are one of those uh, students, I am your primary contact for that. Um, and again, just welcome and congratulations on your admissions. Hi, it's so nice to meet all of you. Um, First off, big, big, big congratulations to all of you. I know you've all worked super, super hard to be here, and I'm just really glad that you all get to join our ND family. Um, my name is Jerome Gan. I'm a senior. I study chemistry and philosophy. Um, and on campus, I live in Barmer Hall, but I'm originally from Malaysia and Singapore. So really nice to get to meet all of you, and uh, I hope to answer as many questions as you guys have. We do, and we've already got a number of questions for those of you who submitted them with your registration, thank you. Um, but you'll have an opportunity to continue to enter questions in the chat, so please do that. We're looking forward to answering as many questions as we can get to uh, this evening. We do wanna start with a, a short presentation from Michael and myself about the services that our offices offer and hopefully address some of those initial questions right away. And so we have two brief presentations and I'll start, turn it over to Michael for his presentation on financial aid. Thank you, Leah. A lot of this hopefully will be a review for you, but just some reminders. So the financial aid and admission decisions were done together for you and you've uh, completed that process. Um, so you made a choice when you applied to the university. You, you made a choice to either apply to fully fund yourself or to be considered for financial aid um, through the university. This is a one-time choice that you have when you apply it at Notre Dame. Um, I also want to remind all students that they were all, you were all considered for the merit um, application process uh, to be considered for our merit scholarships. And we did have several of our international students who did receive merit scholarships this year. So it's always a joy to see that. Um, those of you who were admitted with financial aid should have received by now an email okay. notification with several attachments to it. So you would have gotten your award notification. Um, if there was a loan offered in your package, you would have, you re have received some loan documentation to fill out. And then also there's a scholarship information release form. So those actually need to be sent back to our office. And on the slide, I've provided the email address, faforms at nd.edu. We just need you and one of your parents to sign that award notification, scan it, send it back. If you have a loan offered in your package and you choose to accept it, it's totally your option. You don't have to borrow the loan. It is an option to help you uh, finance your education. However, if you choose not to take that loan, that just in, that will increase what you uh, actually pay the university. So if, you choose, if you're choosing that as an option, please complete those forms and scan them and send them back again to that same email address. And then we also need the scholarship information release form. We have wonderful benefactors at the university that are help us to support the need-based aid that we have here, and that gives us permission to share some basic information about you with them. Um, this letter that you received is actually the amount of aid that you will receive. The letter does go through a four-year commitment to you from the university, so that is that four-year commitment is based on what we're anticipating potential cost increases. Should they be different, the, the amounts could go up or, or down just slightly if the increases are less. Um, all international students, whether you're offered financial aid at the university or not, are eligible to work on campus. So it's always, it's an option to all of you. It's a, it's a great option to make connections on, on campus. Um, students typically use this money that they earn from their campus employment for miscellaneous expenses. Um, so it's kind of pocket money that you'll have while you're here. It is a family choice, a student and family. Uh, it's not required that you work on campus, but it is an option that, that, you, that you have. Our minimum wage for campus jobs here starts at $15, so it's a fairly generous wage. So if you were offered the campus employment in your um, uh, financial aid notification, that amount typically 
um, will equate to about four to six hours of work at that 15 hours um, per hour. Over the summer, um, on the financial aid website, there's a, a section called the job board. So if you're interested in, in uh, looking at a campus employment, I would encourage you to start checking that out over the summer. As we get closer to the start of the school year, more and more jobs will be added to that job board. So you'll have the opportunity to apply for those jobs and potentially do interviews even before you get to school. So I encourage you to, to watch that job board um, on our financial aid website. Some, some logistical things about billing and payment. Um, so tuition and fees, um, your room and meals charges are billed um, by semester here at the university. So the, the fall semester bill goes out um, in the month of July, which is due in August. And then the spring bill uh, is generated in December and due the first part of January. So your charges are broken into two chunks. Um, and then as well as your financial aid is dispersed into two chunks, should you be receiving that. International students are also required to uh, sign up for the university's um, health insurance. That charge is also charged on a semester basis. On the slide that you're seeing on your screen, there are two links there. One that shows uh, a link to the student accounts website where there's information about making wire payments to the university. Um, and there, there are several options on there, but I've encouraged you to check that out. There's also a great option for families there, um, and I think the student accounts office is about ready to update the information for the 23-24 school year for the payment plan that we have at the university. So you have an option to stretch out those payments instead of making two large payments during the academic year. So I encourage you to watch that on, on the, the student accounts website as well. Should you um, have a credit on your account, the Office of Student Accounts is also the office that you would contact to get a refund. Um, for excess financial aid that you have or an excess payment. So say your parents wired your money to your student account, you could get a refund from that excess um, from the, what was due. Um, just a, re, uh, a, a point of clarification, student accounts is not able to release any credit balances until the first day of class of every term. So just kind of keep that in mind um, on your plan. Great. So if you have any questions from what Michael has shared, then we would, again, encourage you to put those in the chat and we'll um, spend most of our time with that q and I'm going to spend a few minutes just talking about the International Student and Scholar Affairs Office. We are actually one of the first offices that you're going to encounter across the summer um, prior to getting to campus. And then once you come to campus, um, International Student Orientation is the first two days of your time on campus right before Welcome Weekend. Um, international students typically move in on the Wednesday before classes start, and that gives you an opportunity to get settled. If you're coming um, from a long distance, it, it gives you an opportunity to rest after jet lag, um, and it also connects you to some really specific resources that your domestic counterparts might have, a U.S. phone, a U.S. bank account, um, information about health insurance, since as Michael mentioned, uh, it is required uh, that you'll be automatically enrolled. Um, and we want to make sure that you understand those pieces. So international student orientation is really about helping you navigate specific resources for navigating life in the U.S. We're looking at how do we help you understand your immigration status if you're coming to the U.S. with a F visa um, to study. And uh, also just connecting with other international students in the really vibrant international student community that's here on campus. And so across those first two days that you arrive on campus, you'll be busy connecting, learning, um, and getting settled here before Welcome Weekend starts on Friday before classes. And that is, we talked a little bit about there's 200, 300 students at International Student Orientation. Welcome Weekend, you start to meet the another uh, 2,000 students that are arriving, all the first year students here on campus. Um, and then by the first day of classes, the entire student body has returned. So it's a really lovely gradual increase of building connections and community um, and comfort. Uh, on campus, especially if you haven't had a chance to visit campus yet. Um, you'll have that time to really get to know it and become familiar. Um, you'll see right below on the slide um, that I've talked a little bit also about the pre-arrival sessions and what you can expect over the summer as you're preparing to come. Um, I was sharing with Jerome, who used to be an international ambassador and help us welcome students at International Student Orientation, that we just had our international ambassador retreat last Saturday. And so we had an opportunity for all of the current student leaders to think about how are they going to welcome you this summer. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is with three pre-arrival sessions. And the first one is going to be um, really helping you think about the uh, making connections, how do you connect through the ND clubs? How do you connect once you get to campus? How do you find um, friends that are from your part of the world or your home country? 
Um, one will be really focused on academics, like what to understand about this transition to the U.S. education system if you aren't um, familiar with it. And I'll be honest, like students coming to college, that is it's new for every single first year student that's coming. Um, and so you're in good company. Um, but also, I think our uh, students coming from other educational systems would love just a little bit more information about how to navigate the changes um, that they're experiencing. And then our third pre-arrival session is actually going to be just logistics. How do you get to campus from Chicago O'Hare? Um, how do you, what do you pack? How do you prepare for a winter in South Bend? Uh, and all of those things, um, the international ambassadors are going to be able to walk through that with you. And then my office is going to help you really understand what do you need to do for the, uh, for the F-1 visa, um, for the appointment at the consulate. When you get to the U.S. Port of Entry, we'll unpack all of that with you in these pre-arrival sessions so that you really feel comfortable um, with this transition to the U.S. and to Notre Dame. Um, a few things that our office also offers during the, the fall, um, it is going to be an incredibly busy time during the fall. Uh, you will be amazed at the hundreds of things that are going to be on your calendar um, once, you, once you land here. Um, but we also offer a few things specifically for international student community. We have an ISA info blitz that really tackles all of those questions like health insurance, social security numbers, employment in the U.S., um, understanding cultural adjustment, which everyone experiences very differently and at different times um, while at Notre Dame. Um, and then for those of you who may not be as familiar with American football, we do offer a football 101 <laughs> class, and that's always super helpful to our staff as well. Um, just to understand what is the point system here? Uh, why are people just falling down constantly? Um, and where am I supposed to stand up, sit down, cheer? What are the traditions at Notre Dame? So we do offer a session on that as well. And then lastly, we want our students to be really invested in the community here at Notre Dame. And I said it, Jerome will talk a little bit about how busy you will be um, in the fall semester, your first semester. Uh, but there is really wonderful things about being in this part of the United States in the Midwest. And so we do plan trips here in the fall for a day trip to Chicago. We'll go up to Michigan, the state just above Indiana, uh, to go see Lake Michigan, um, go hiking. Uh, and just explore different parts of this part of the world. So you have a good sense of place when you're here at the university. Um, so those are all things that we really look forward to inviting you to in the fall and welcome you on campus to. And then lastly, um, and this may be a really great um, time to pivot to our questions. Um, and we hope you're putting them in the chat for us. Uh, but one of the things that came up was how do I get connected to resources? for understanding academics and how do I get connected to people? So I thought maybe our first set of questions could be thinking about how do we connect to resources for academics? How do I connect to people um, and just build community in my first semester on campus that will just continue to build throughout your time at Notre Dame? So I don't know if either one of you want to start with there. Can let you jump in on the academic? Sure. Oh, yeah. um, so in terms of academics, I, I guess Notre Dame in general, I think the biggest thing is just speaking to people, right? Mm -hmm. Like taking that step and being, mm -hmm. sending an email or, you know, following up with your professor or TAs, which are the teaching assistants. Um, I don't come from a place where that's really normal. Like we might have remedial classes and, you know, we'll speak to our teachers in this formal manner. Um, but coming to Notre Dame, it was different because you could go up to a professor and say, hey, um, you know, there's this content I don't understand. Could we meet, you know, later today, sometime this week? Um, and the same goes for the teaching assistants that are usually upperclassmen or graduate students. Um, and really, I would say the same thing goes for everyone around you, people in your dormitory, um, people in clubs that you're in, be it academic, um, social clubs, cultural clubs. Um, so I think, you know, stepping out of your com comfort zone a bit and just trying to speak to people um, and not being afraid to ask for help, I think, is super key. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing, I think, just the number of resources that are on campus for students. Uh, it's just sometimes asking um, where you find it. I was just talking to a student who was like, I didn't actually know where to find some mental health resources, and I didn't find them until January. And she's like, I just wasn't asking the question in time. Um, and when she needed something, she found it. Um, and so I think it really is the uh, our international ambassadors talk a lot about how the resources are plenty. It's just about asking that right question and keep having conversations with people to get connected to them. Right. And I think even asking some of the administrative offices as well. So if you have some general questions, you'd be surprised some of the questions that we get in, our, in the financial aid office. But we're also a resource to help you point to other areas on campus. So the same, I could, I'm sure 
Lee would agree with the, the ISA office. So administrative offices are just as useful for questions and to get answers there as well as, but be curious and ask, and there's no question that is not worth asking. Yeah, for sure. And there's already ways that you can be connected now. Um, a great opportunity to talk to your admission counselor about connecting you with international students from your community, from your home country, um, from your region of the world. Um, really great opportunity to start connecting with students now. Over the summer, um, the indie clubs, the Notre Dame clubs, will do quite a bit of event planning um, to connect new students with current students with alum. Uh, and so there's lots of opportunities to start building community there. And I think that the um, uh, once you're on campus at International Student Orientation, can you talk a little bit about those groups that you're in or kind of your first few impressions of uh, residence hall, the senior yeah. hall fellows, all that? So it was super nice. As an international student, you get in a couple days earlier than everyone else. Um, so that usually means you get to meet the other international students, but also the bad kids um, <laughs> and, and the ROTC kids. And ROTC is the, uh, the military program yep. here. Um, and so it's nice that you get to meet a bit of the domestic community as well as the international community here on campus. Mm -hmm. um, there are events and programming that, you know, will make it feel less awkward, like you're not going out of your way to do it. Um, but say you'll play games together, um, you'll have time to, you know, catch up, get some coffee, um, just have breakfast or something with other international students. This could be, you know, from your region or if you want to branch out um, from other parts of the world. And it's surprising to see how how much we all have in common. Mm -hmm. I think I remember speaking to someone from Brazil. I remember speaking to someone from um, Italy, I believe. And I was just surprised. It was like, oh, and, you know, we're all coming here. And we, we said, oh, it's, uh, I didn't expect Notre Dame to be like this. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't expect people to, to, you know, everyone says, hi, how are you? Everyone greets each other. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that might not be the most common thing where I'm from, um, but it was nice to know that everyone genuinely meant it and wanted to get to know you. So. Yeah. Any other resources I'm thinking about in the financial aid office um, that you know that students are looking for? Um, one of them might be, uh, lost the thing, I mean, stipends for travel, any um, help with moving for that transition to yeah. get to campus, to get connected to these other resources. Right, so some of our um, higher needs students, we, you would have received some information in your award notification if, if the university is going to assist with some of your travel costs. So once students have confirmed, there's a population of students that we'll be reaching out to to give them, to kind of connect them with our travel agency to help them book some of the flight costs. In general, we don't do that, but the, there are um, a few uh, higher needs students that we are able to assist with that. Some of the other costs that students um, frequently ask if, if there's some assistance on, there's limited assistance with helping with CBIS fees. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we're not able to help with, with visa fees. Um, if you have questions on that, I would kind of reach out to your admissions counselor and um, between them and, and our office and um, we can work out the pr procedures on that. But there is some limited resources in that, again, for CVIS, but not visa fees. Um, but again, if you have questions on that, I would, I would drop an email um, to the, uh, the financial aid office and we could, uh, we could answer some more specific questions directed to that. Great. And that might be a really great opportunity to um, go to the next question that we have, which is, um, what does it look like to get my F1 visa after I have said yes to Notre Dame? And so I can talk about that a little bit. Um, but some of the things that um, you're talking about are, is that CVIS fee, that visa right. fee, there's lots of fees coming up and some different processes. So our colleagues in the admissions office are putting together all of the, the yeses and students saying yes to Notre Dame. Um, and once uh, you have said yes to Notre Dame, then they're going to contact our office and say, we need, this student needs an I-20 now. Um, and then our office is putting together that documentation. Um, and we're looking at uh, what you're, you know, we're putting on the I-20, what your major is going to be, what your citizenship is, what your, um, uh, what your program dates are. So coming this fall. Um, and then we can actually email that I-20 to you. Um, you're going to print it off, review it, make sure everything's accurate sign it and with that i-20 you can then schedule your visa appointment so you're going to go and complete the ds-160 um, you're going to schedule your visa appointment and the really great news for all of you that was maybe a little bit different in the last couple of years is the department of state is prioritizing f and j visa holders and so you can know that when you look at those visa wait times on the department of state website um, that you know that your visa application is going to be prioritized because they really understand how important it is to get to students um, to campus. So when we give you that I-20, that's the CVIS fee that Michael is talking about. 
Um, that's a fee that you're paying to the U.S. government for that I-20. And then you're going to have another fee that's going to go to the Department of State that is that visa application fee. And some of you might have an additional reciprocity fee, and you can always reach out to our office to ask about that um, if you're coming from specific countries. Um, once you have that I-20, you have that visa stamp in your passport, uh, then you are ready to enter the U.S. Uh, next fall. And with that visa stamp, with that I-20, you can enter the U.S. up to 30 days before the program start date on your I-20. So really great process um, and is pretty seamless right now. So you'll be reaching out to the ISSA office to ask questions about your immigration status. If you have concerns about that um, visa application process and that consular um, processing time. So certainly reach out if you've got questions, um, but know that you'll get that I-20 very quickly um, after you've said yes to Notre Dame. Um, I'm going to go to another question, um, and I'm curious if the you could talk a little bit, really jumping right back into something not at all related to the F1 status, uh, but tell us a little bit about your experiences with research. We were talking about that before you um, we started, but research here at Notre Dame as an international student. Um. I'm, I'm happy to say research as an international student is like research, like a domestic Thank student. Thank you. Yes, so yes it, very it, much it's, so. It's the same thing. <laughs> um, so I remember uh, first year I reached out to a professor um, in the physics department um, and I joined his lab and um, I'm now part of the nuclear science lab and um, we do all sorts of cool stuff with the accelerators and you in the basement. Um, I think last semester we, we made an element. Not a new one, a, an existing yes, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but it you know that that's kind of how accessible it was, right? So first year, I reached out to several professors and I tried to figure out what was most interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this is something that that was near and dear to me at the time. And I said, okay. And slowly, research evolves as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're not super. You don't have to definitely commit to the lab for all four years of your time here, or all three years, or however long you are doing research for. Um, I know a lot of friends of mine who hop in and out of research, not only in the sciences, um, also in arts and letters or global affairs. Um, there are all those opportunities available. Um, that's largely for the on-campus research. Um, Off-campus, if you wish to apply for some sort of like fellowship or stipend or summer research, um, that would be similar to applying for like an internship. Um, and the school definitely has resources there. Um, to explain the whole process to you, but also as an international student, that will be something that you are able to do, especially if it is related to your area of study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's such an important point, Jerome, that so much of the Notre Dame experience, your immigration status, the F-1 visa is not going to impact it. So you're going to have access to research. Uh, Michael talked about access to on-campus jobs. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back to that. There was a question, a really great question about how do I access study abroad as an international student? Again, your F1 status is not going to impact that, your ability to participate in study abroad on campus. Um, and so really, there are a few things that may be off-campus opportunities, internship opportunities. You will need to apply for authorization. There will be a few additional steps, but these on-campus opportunities are fully available and there's no limits to how international students, regardless of their immigration status, can access um, those opportunities. So, Michael, could you talk a little bit more again about the getting a job on campus, student jobs? And yeah, so the, the campus employment or job, there, there are plenty of opportunities for students to work on campus, all the way from working in the dining halls into work doing research. Um, and again, I would encourage you to start looking over the summer on our job board on our website, the financial aid website. There's a, a job board and that once the applicant or the postings start going in there, you'll be able to see it by different colleges, by different departments. And they'll just give you a whole array of different opportunities to look at as far as campus employment on, on you know, on, on the campus here. And then you'll actually have the ability to apply for those positions through that job board. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but there's any array of opportunities to work on campus here. There's never mm -hmm. a shortage. <laughs> never a shortage. And that's right. often where people will, our students will say they've really made really great connections in community. Um, we had a student who got a job in rec sports and she right. was like, that was where I found my people, um, was in the rec sports working uh, a desk job, right? But just being able to connect in those spaces. Yeah, I also encourage students to, to make those connections with their professors because sometimes they, they will have a heads up, especially sophomore, junior, senior year. Mm -hmm. They'll have a heads up on a position that's going to get posted before it gets posted and they don't even have to go through the process. So mm -hmm. lay that groundwork here freshman year start making those connections ask ask your dorm mates um, always ask the questions on that but there's plenty of opportunities for campus employment yeah 
I think there was, I mentioned earlier, there's a question about how to study abroad work as an international student. Again, really similar process to all of our domestic students that you have um, all the access to the many, many programs we have for study abroad, um, opportunities to do research abroad, internships abroad, uh, and uh, also just study and take classes at one of our 12 gateways or centers um, or any, I think there's about 35 other options uh, for locations and sites um, across our many study abroad opportunities. Can you tell me, go ahead. Yeah, and I was just gonna share, Leah. So if you're, if you're a student that's being supported by financial aid, your financial aid does transfer to your study abroad program. Yeah. So that's, um, and there's, because the costs are a little bit different, there could be an adjustment um, and an increase to the to the support, but if you are an international student being supported by financial aid, that is absolutely transferable to a study abroad program. Yeah. So a question just came in, so maybe we can pivot there about fall um, break. What do you do for um, when everyone else may be leaving, and you're like, it's not quite enough time for me to fly home, fly back. Um, fall break, spring break, uh, Thanksgiving break. Um, so I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what you've done over the breaks um, and I can talk a little bit about activities that we've supported. Yeah, um, I think I've I've done all sorts of stuff during those fall breaks and spring breaks and, and you know, the shorter breaks. Um, first off, I was very generously adopted by my domestic friends, so, so they invite me home um, to spend a few <laughs> days here and there. Um, at some point it was like odd couch surfing. I'm going to different places all mm -hmm. around the U.S. Um, in addition to that, I mean, even if you're not, um, I, a couple of friends and I, we went to I think Seattle and then this, I mean, this spring, we just went to San Francisco. So, you know, having those, that, that week was nice because we wanted to get out of South Bend, but, you know, really explore something different. And it's mm -hmm. nice that the U.S. has all these different outlets of mm -hmm. um, places. I know, at, I remember freshman or sophomore year, um, I was super busy and I mean, I used it to study and do research as well. So there's, there's no pressure to, you know, to definitely travel somewhere you know, that you have to go home. Um, and even being on campus, there, there are quite a few students that stay back, domestic and international students. Um, I made a couple of really good friends, even when I was on campus during that time. So mm -hmm. really enjoyed my time. Um, that is absolutely nothing to worry about. Um, and I don't, I don't believe you will feel lonely at all. If anything, it might be nice because you get a bit of breathing space and just your, yeah. your own space. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and I think that there's also the residence halls are open during those shorter breaks for spring break, fall break, Thanksgiving break. The dining halls are open. Um, there's still a lot of activity on campus, so a lot of ways to engage. Uh, during the winter break, we were talking earlier that um, some students can't go home for that four weeks over the winter break. One thing that happens quite a bit is that uh, students are adopted um, and are able to sort of adventure around the U.S. or stay with their roommates and um, have a really wonderful break. Um, but the university does provide some support for students to stay on campus if they need to during that longer winter break. Um, and we sort of have an individualized plan um, as that comes up for students. So um, it's good. Um, some of the other activities that we have as part of the question that came through uh, for that fall trip, uh, we go hiking down in a, a state park that's south of town uh, for a couple of hours and then I'll gather and have lunch. Uh, we will go shopping uh, for winter clothes. So if you do not have any of your winter clothes, uh, Jerome, I'm curious how much uh, winter clothes you had when you got here. Um, but we do a shopping trip to uh, <laughs> go get the coat, the scarves, all of that for winter. Um, and then we also do some trips to Chicago um, to enjoy uh, the lovely city that's there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, great, 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 great. I, I get this question every year from everyone from everywhere. Um, I would say don't panic. It, it will <laughs> still be warm when you get here. Um, the, I think this is good philosophy, like in general, get stuff when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's no sure. point buying like five winter coats. Um, even if you are going to be super fashionable, just <laughs> just get one and, and you know, bear it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does get colder gradually, um, although we do have like some periods where it's like snowing for absolutely no reason. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, that being said, just get yourself like a moderate coat. Don't overdo it. You're not going to be living in, in like sub, sub, sub temperatures. Yeah. It does get cold, but I think you can definitely layer if you need to um, and then like adjust, you know, accordingly because not everyone feels like uber cold. I know people who still have big winter jackets yeah. out in spring because they, Feel cold, so it's, it's an thing. individual yeah, thing. Yeah, it's an individual yeah. thing for sure. For I have sure. one coat, by the way. So yes. okay, I still have okay. it. Okay, you know, this, so, so we're good. <laughs> it's lasted you the four years. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Um, another question, just going back to study abroad that came through was, uh, what's the visa process look like for study abroad if I'm coming from another country? And the study abroad team will help you navigate that. Um, if you're going on a Notre Dame sponsored study abroad program, um, they have a team of 10 people that are there to help guide you through that program, to help you consider like, what's the best program for you? Is, is London the best fit for you? Is Jerusalem? Are you looking to go to France, down to Chile? Um, there's so many places. And I think, Jerome, we've talked a little bit about sometimes students think, oh, but Notre Dame is my study abroad experience. Right. Um, but we have a good number of students coming from around the world who still go study abroad over the, the fall um, and spring, do summer programs. Um, so, yeah. So I think there's all sorts of ways to engage there. I would say like even as like even though this is technically my study abroad, mm -hmm. um, I still applied for study abroad programs, too. Um, and it was kind of all the same. Just imagine you having a Notre Dame semester elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That that was really it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to have that that different, uh, like a new experience and a different experience, but, you know, just, it, it was really just the same thing. So yeah, nothing to worry about there. So everyone's got, yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, students are making really individual choices about what their time at Notre Dame is gonna be. There's this collective experience, but also how you define it. Um, there's 500 cultural clubs, there's 100 study abroad programs, there's, you know, a thousand jobs posted every <laughs> semester, there's all the residential hall activities, all of that's happening, you know, have this really individual experience. Um, uh, we have a question that came through from one of our Canadian admits, which is super fun, and it's, I'm Canadian, wondering if South Bend is colder than what I've experienced. And I mean... Probably not, depending on where you're from in Canada, but we have gotten a few. I think you might have been here for one of the polar vortexes. Yeah. Um, we've got, you know, 20, uh, 20 degrees below zero uh, right, for a but, few days. But all you have to do is wait 24 hours and it's going to change. And it's going to be so fine. It, yes, it, it really we is. We have a, a lot of fluctuation in the weather here. So yeah. if yeah. it's cold one day, give it a couple of days, you'll, it'll you get the weather you want. It'll come. It'll come. So, yeah. and even today we had bright, beautiful sun, um, snow for a little bit, and then sunniest afternoon you could have imagined. It was beautiful. So um, it's really fun. So for our Canadian friends, um, you can tell everybody that you know what you're about. Uh, there's no uh, no need to know. Uh, I, I would say from like a student perspective, sure. you'd want it to just keep snowing. And hopefully it snows so hard <laughs> that that school is canceled the next day, right? Yes, I, exactly. I've only had one of those yes. um, ever. And I was I was hoping that it like it happened sometime this semester. Yeah, no. You've got to right, keep right. dreaming. Keep the dream. Uh, no, the first snowball fight of the, the fall, I think, is pretty a pretty good time where yeah. a thousand... A few thousand students were out with the, the snow, so it's it's really good. Um, I'm curious, we had one question that came in that was really about, I mean, what's the best advice if the first language is in English? Um, what are some resources? Uh, if your English is strong, and I know this isn't in your experience, but are there some resources where, again, coming back to this idea of how do you find resources for things like that? My question is my English isn't strong, mm -hmm. or I don't know what to do in this class, or I'm feeling a little lost. Um, how would you suggest that people find resources? So I would say first off, just ask, right? Um, if your instructors, be it TAs, professors, don't know your situation, they won't be able to help you. Mm -hmm. So be sure to, you know, yeah. tell them at the start, like say, hey, look, this is what I'm experiencing. I remember we all have a required class, which is writing and rhetoric mm -hmm. that you'll take in your first year. And my professor made it like super important at the start. He said, hey, look, no need to let me know right now, but if you are, you know, if English is your second or third language, please just drop me an email, let me know so we can work on that. Um, myself as a philosophy major, I'm graded on how good, you know, the thoughts are mm -hmm. or how good my argument is and, and less so, you know, if my grammar is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important. And the same thing goes in, say, for chemistry. Yes, it's important people to, it's important to be able to write you know, coherently and, and you know, concisely, but your professors are very understanding. Um, and it's really about kind of improving yourself. So, you know, for me, like I used to ramble on, like in general, I'm, I'm, I'm a native English speaker, reader, writer. And even then, you know, I would ramble and my professor would be like, all right, I'm not docking you for this, but just, just know that this is something you're doing and we can improve on it. So, and I think other, you know, friends of mine who, um, of which English was not their first language, they've had pretty good responses to from their professors and there's definitely mm -hmm. um, avenues. There's a writing center you could go to. 
um, mm-hmm. and, and your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love asking my friends to just peer review things I've written. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Everyone's just been really helpful and really kind about that. I think there's two something to remember that as you're getting more into your major, you're also learning that language of your major. And so I think philosophy, like that is not a language that I know. And so thinking about um, everyone around you is also having sort of this journey into different ways of expressing themselves and different ways of communicating. And so um, that hopefully that takes some pressure off, but there are quite a few resources. A lot of it really is just asking um, and asking people, maybe just slow down a little bit or just can you repeat that one more time? I just want to think about um, it's that simple. There's also um, the Center for Language of Study and Cultures offers some English for academic purposes um, courses on campus. And they also just offer a lot of support for students to one, connect with your your first or second or third language and English um, in less formal settings. And so there's opportunities like that. Um, And then just continuing to build community, ask questions, reach out to people for sure. Um, The... uh, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about uh, the question that just came through, which is what is there to do outside of campus in South Bend? Um, and maybe why is that not uh, the, the best question to ask for your first semester on campus when there's so much? Yeah. I'll we'll start there. Sure. I, yeah, I'd say I was I was crazy busy. Um, it's nice that like campus is, it's large enough, you know, that all the things that you might need um, are kind of like a a stone's throw away if you're like a really good thrower, I suppose, <laughs> right? Um, there are enough things to keep you busy on campus. Um, you know, if you're hanging out with friends, if you have club activities, um, dorm activities, miscellaneous events that are held, um, there there will definitely be enough things to keep you um, busy on campus. Um, and I think even off campus, there, there are some things downtown, events, I know it's funny because like I know some classes also try to connect to that. Like I'm in a mm-hmm. jazz class right now, mm-hmm. and one of the assignments is well, listen, you know, listen to a jazz performance. Mm-hmm. And for that, you know, we got what well, we could um, go out into the into town and actually listen to a jazz performance in one of the jazz cafes. So, mm-hmm. you know, th- there is a, a, a nice community mm-hmm. um, aspect going on there that that's that definitely has avenues of things to do outside of campus. Yeah, and I know our international ambassadors have been talking about, hey, we want to put together like a three-hour itinerary. Like, what is there to do? Like, jump downtown and go make some pottery, stop by and have some jazz, grab some coffee. Um, There's about 10 different coffee shops that you can just go in and and do kind of a tour of the coffee situation or tea situation, if that's your preference. Um, And uh, so lots of of, of things like that. Lots of galleries and uh, art Mm -hmm. downtown as well. There's a couple of wonderful parks downtown, uh, Mm -hmm. one of the... uh, Nice skating area. Um, mm-hmm. So there, if there, when there's a wonderful um, water east raceway, um, especially late in the spring or late or late in the fall, early spring, there's rafting you can do to go down mm-hmm. the, the east race. So there's there's lots to do downtown. Yeah. Uh, but there's also a lot to do right here on campus. There is, and I think it's just the thing to remember is when you get here, you're going to have plans for I'm going to explore the area, I'm going to do all these, and there will be ways to do that. Uh, uh, to explore, but there's so much going on on campus. You're going to find a really good life um, and really good adventure here uh, within the walls of your residence hall, the football stadium, the dining hall, your classes, and all the club activities. So um, it's really great. Um, I'm going to check and see if there's any more questions coming through, but what I'd like you guys to think about as we think about maybe wrapping up uh, is what is your best advice for international students um, before we get to our final question, um, which I think is going to be um, how can I best find and specifically connect with students from my home country? Which we answered a little bit earlier, but it might be good to just remind students what are some ways to connect with students from their home country. Yeah, um, feel feel free and, and just be, you know, just be happy to just pop out and join different cultural clubs, join different. Um, I know there are cultural clubs in the sense that it's like the Asian American Association. I'm from Malaysia. And even though, you know, it's the Asian American Association, it was really nice to be able to connect with other people. Um, inevitably, I met people from Singapore, I met people from China um, and, and all around the world. So, well, I guess more specifically Asia, but it was nice because then, you know, come New Year's or something, there was always a group of people that I knew, oh, we would all share this kind of common mm-hmm. um, holiday, common occasion. Mm-hmm. And that made me feel like a bit less homesick. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's always that. You never know, you, there might be a, your country club, so like say the club, the the Indonesia club. Um, I, I do know there's a Singapore club, 
lurking around mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Brazil Student Association uh, kind of relaunched last year has been really active this year. So yeah, there we go. Lots of different opportunities. Uh, and I think we talked a little bit about those Notre Dame clubs that you could be connecting with over the summer um, and contacting your admission counselor to ask for how to get connected to other students from your home country. And then when getting on campus, there's always an opportunity to reach out to our office. And we're glad to send out a blast to say, hey, the students here, they would love to connect with other students from um, from your home country. Um, and that's always uh, easy to do. So that being our final question, I would love to hear a little bit about advice for final advice for our um, admitted students, everyone who's joined us tonight um, for international students at the university. Michael, let's start with you. Yeah, so I think the advice I would have is be curious. Um, explore, ask. If you need something, ask. Please don't go without something because you don't know how to get it. Please ask somebody. So always ask if you if you need something. Um, and I think just have your mind open and, and embrace the Notre Dame family. We are one big family and everybody is welcome. Um, so I think um, just come here with an open mind, open heart and um, experience Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say there, there are two big things for me. The first one is taking your time to do things, Mm -hmm. right? It's a new environment, it's a new place, and there's so many new people you're meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, A big thing for me was like whether or not I was gonna find my group of friends. Mm -hmm. Um, That didn't happen in the first week. It didn't happen Mm -hmm. in the first month. It took time. Um, I found friends that I thought I connected with, clicked with, and then over a year, maybe we kind of drifted, and then I found new friends. And so all these processes take time. And so Mm -hmm. I'd say that's a really, really big thing. Don't rush anything. Um, and then my second piece of advice would be, if you think it's, it's even remotely interesting, just try it. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to rush into it, but you definitely have to at least like satiate your like mm-hmm. hunger for wanting to find out. Yeah. Um, there, there's like no penalty if you were to join a club. There's no penalty if you were to leave a club. Mm-hmm. Um, so try it and, and just explore because Notre Dame has so, so many avenues and opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, personally, spiritually, academically, professionally. Um, there's no way you could try all of it, but they're all there for you. So pick what you want and just go with it. We had uh, one of my favorite stories from our, uh, one of our international ambassadors was he had never been sailing before in his life. And at the, one of the first kind of sign up for a club events of the year, he went and signed up for the sailing club. And then his senior year, he was the captain of the sailing club. And he had just found wow. such a wonderful space to connect with people and something new. And he just never imagined that was going to be part of his story. And that happens again. And I mean, there's a thousand stories like that every year. So I think I absolutely agree with you guys. I don't even really want to say anything, but I will note um, because you are from this point to fall to August uh, when we are welcoming students on campus, we'll have a lot of time with your family and your community and with home. And so I would just say, look around and observe where you currently are and really enjoy and appreciate that because you're going to be bringing that with you to Notre Dame and you're going to find a way to um, bring home your home um, here to this community Um, and find places to plug in and share. Um, And so really just enjoy the next six months as you're preparing to come to campus. And then when you get here, be curious, try everything, dig in, um, and don't put too much pressure on yourself uh, to find, figure it all out immediately because you're going to have just a grand adventure. So it's been such a pleasure to be with you guys tonight and chat. And we're so grateful for all of you who have joined us as a part of this ND admissions live event, our, our global family. Um, such a privilege. We hope that you will go back and look at all of our admissions live events. Um, They're all been recorded um, and review those. And we hope to see you at the admitted student days. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. And thank you guys. Thank you for all being here and go Irish.